Greetings. We're going to shoot a little video here showing how to remove the flange, the, uh, the PTO mounting flange, on an R2 power harrow. Uh, in the case that this should need to be changed for whatever reason, if you're changing it over from one tractor to another, like a Grillo to a BCS or something like this, uh, or if the flange needs to be serviced or, or um, removed for servicing. Anyway, you've got four bolts around the circumference of this flange. You've got two on the sides, which are Allen head set screws and nuts. And then these, these two on the top and bottom are just, we're going to call them placeholders. They're just, they're just little plug nuts. Actually, this one's not even tight. Uh, in order to remove the flange, it's, it's these ones on the side that are actually holding it on. So I'm going to loosen the jam nuts just briefly. This is a 24 millimeter, which is roughly a 15 16 or an adjustable wrench. So I'll loosen those, and then I will back out the Allen head set screws. Let's go ahead and remove them. And then the flange just slides off. So in the inside of the flange, there is a coupling that couples the shaft of this flange onto the shaft in the power harrow. This has to go in, it only goes in one way because the shafts are different sizes. You can see this one's much larger than this one. So if you take this off, make sure this doesn't get lost because without this in there, of course, there's no coupling between the two. So now that I've got this off and if I'm putting a different flange back on, I'm gonna, of course, make sure my coupling goes back in here. It doesn't matter where you put it in. But I do want to point out that what R2 has done on this power harrow, this is the new lighter power harrow, 30 inch model that came out in roughly um, 2016, the EL models, as you can see here. The older type power harrows actually were a little different than this, but uh, this is still close. But anyway, what they've got here is, ah, I'm not sticking that on. You got holes on the top and bottom that are round holes, and you got holes on the side that are actually slotted. So that's like an ovalized hole. These Allen head set screws are what's holding this on. So they're threading through this, this flange here, and they're inserting into one of these sets of holes. We, we typically want them to go into the side holes because what that does is it allows that whole flange to float a little bit. It actually can rotate. That allows the harrow, when attached to the tractor, to float independently of the tractor axle. So that if your axle, um, or if your tractor rather, is going over lumpy terrain, for example, one of your tires falls in a hole on the tractor, the harrow can actually stay straight. It doesn't cock the harrow to the side to give you a crooked bed. So Harrow is actually capable of leveling out unlevel ground. Um, now, if for some reason you were using the Harrow for an application where you didn't want the Harrow to float independently of the tractor, then you would install these bolts in the top and bottom holes, which go into these round holes here. See, in that case, you would remove these place holders, put them in these holes, and put the Allen head set screws in the top and bottom holes to go into these round holes, and then it can't rotate. It's just fixed in place. But for just about every application we've run into, you want the thing to be able to float. So we want them in the side holes. So I will rotate this until the spline shafts line up right. There we go. Slides all the way on. And then you reinstall your Allen head set screws. Now, the important thing here is that you're not completely tightening these things. What you're going to do, you'll back off these jam nuts, and you'll bring these all the way in. I could do it by hand here before I get to the wrench. Bring them all the way in until the Allen head set screw stops turning by hand, like so, and then back them out about one full turn. Then lock your jam nut in place. Like so. And this one here, yep, went in until it stopped. I'll back it out about one full turn, bring my jam nut down, 
and there it is. And now it rotates the way it's supposed to. If you bring those Allen head screws all the way down until they stop, they actually jam into those uh, slotted holes and they'll stop this thing from rotating. You won't get any float out of it. And it could be jammed off to one side so your quick coupling hole never lines up. So that's the full procedure. Of course, since this is loose, I'm gonna go get a wrench and tighten that. I think that's a three quarter inch. But you're ready to go. Just apply a little grease to, to the quick coupling flange if needed, and you're ready to work. Thanks.